Welcome to Paranormal M, your guide to the ghostly and the mysterious. Hit that subscribe button and activate notifications to catch every chilling story that we share. Get ready for a thrilling adventure into the unknown. Story from 20 plus years ago. I don't recall the actual date of this event, but I was a teenager. So we'll say it was the early 2000s. My father and I were driving home from somewhere in his car. It was just after sunset and the sun was all but vanished behind the horizon. Now this was in Georgia, so heavily wooded not many streetlights in this area. As we came to a stoplight perpendicular to two large two-lane roads, it was like bridged over an embankment. We saw the road was empty, just kind of both were sitting quietly. As we did, an older, maybe 60s or 70s dark-colored four-door vehicle with its lights off careened down the road, then went straight through the guardrails of the bridge and disappeared. I kind of sat there for a minute, thinking I was hallucinating. Then I turned to my dad, and he was looking too. I asked, Did you see that? He confirmed that he had seen it too. We drove to the area where the vehicle disappeared and noticed the guardrail wasn't damaged. Not even a little bit. We then took a light, shone it down into the woods and brush, and saw nothing. I tried to look up news articles afterwards about a wreck or anything similar on that stretch of roadway and found nothing at all. We still remember it today and bring it up from time to time. Super weird. Thought I'd share my only strange paranormal-ish encounter I've had. Almost shit myself. Home alone experience. So I'm playing Xbox in my living room for multiple hours. Maybe three or four with all the lights off at night. My girlfriend is still at work. Suddenly my cat starts making weird noises and looking up toward the double French doors that are adjacent to my Xbox setup. I take my attention away from my game, which is Gears of War 1 for anybody wondering which game. Wanted to check what my cats were meowing all about. Well, goosebumps shot up my spine. The moment my attention was toward the French double doors, I could see what looked like a transparent woman with long black hair standing in front of the doors looking out the windows. My heart started racing and I shrieked. You know when you're on your phone or on your PC for extended periods of time with the brightness maxed and no blue light glasses when you look away into the darkness? Like the light from the screen is still imprinted in your mind's eye. I essentially chalked it up to that, but in Gears of War 1 multiplayer online, there isn't a woman with long hair and a white dress or anything like that. A few weeks later, we had a pool party. Nearing the end, I was in a conversation with my girlfriend's mom, whose black cat had recently passed. She told me that when her cat passed, she had a vision of her cat transforming into a woman with long black hair. We live in an end suite of the parents' place. Was this vision... The woman I saw in front of the double French doors? Am I just seeing blue light? Not a lot of experience with the paranormal or ghosts in my life. Only the other time when I was younger at my parents' house, I heard doors slamming when I investigated. None of the windows were open and nobody was home. Paranormal or physical? Hearing incoherent whispers through bedside window. I live in an above-ground basement. That's in a three-story town home. And for some context, I'm a very light sleeper. I'll pretty much wake up at almost any disturbance. To help alleviate this, I typically place some sort of white noise, whether it be artificial or something like a fan to help drown out any odd bumps in the night while I'm sleeping. Anyway, I've been living in this place for over a year now, and aside from the occasional sounds from my roommates waking up earlier or an odd nightmare, I've generally slept here without any issue. That was until last night, at least. I had gone to bed around midnight, which is typical of me since I'm a night owl at heart. I was sleeping soundly when I suddenly was awoken by something. I began to sit up in my sleepy state to try more clearly understand the sound I'd just heard when it repeated itself a second time. 
It was an incoherent whisper that I heard clear as day coming from just a mere four feet to my left from my closed window. I started to immediately feel panicked, but then maybe I just still had a weird state of half-sleep. So, I tried my best to wake myself up more. Stay attentive and listen if the sound occurred once more. Heard it again three more times. Exact same cadence. Same volume, same location. Now I was truly freaked out, because I knew I was fully awake. My mind went to panic mode as I quickly got my makeshift weapon and some pepper spray as my mind tossed around the ideas of a potential intruder, even perhaps some sort of spirit. Which, mind you, my encounters with the supernatural have been minimal at best. I've never witnessed something to this level in my life. Now you may be thinking, if you hear a voice coming from your window, it wouldn't make sense for it to be somebody outside. Well, I would wholeheartedly agree, except that this whisper didn't have all the sounds of being muffled by somebody trying to talk through a window. It sounded clear and airy, as if somebody was right next to my window talking to me from the inside of my room. Disturbed, tired, and feeling exposed, I decided to head up to the main level of the house to keep watch and, you know, be out of potential reach of whatever was scoping out or was currently in the basement. I waited in silence for about 40 minutes, just starting to subtly convince myself that it maybe was all just a ruse of my mind. That's when a set of repetitive intentional knocks came at one of the glass windows or doors. I don't know for certain as I couldn't muster the courage to look anywhere, but it knocked about six or seven times. It was a light knock that wasn't rhythmic in the slightest. This was the last of the activity I encountered. Not too long after this one, my roommate came downstairs for a late night drink of water and we ended up searching through the property both on the inside and checking the porch together to see if we see any traces of anything. All was clear. My question to all of you, has anybody here experienced anything like this? Not at all sleep paralysis, but noticeable whispers or knocking. If so, do you have any suggestions on what one can do? I'll say it is entirely possible that this could have been a person, but I didn't hear any footsteps near porch or at my bedside window, which would be pretty hard to cover up unless somebody was really trying to be sneaky. Perfect woman trying to convince me to stay. I think the start of the dream was a lady teaching a classroom. It was bright and colorful. There was a lot of pink and yellow in the decorations of the room. The teacher had a pink modern top, almost a crop top, but too long to be one, really. Navy jeans, she had a high bun and appeared to be of Latino or Hispanic ethnicity. She looked like she was in her 20s. There was a projector on while she was teaching. It gave light, but kind of just looked like they put up a blank image. She walked out of the room for some reason, not casting a shadow on the projector. It appeared we were taking a break, or class ended. I was focusing on getting to work, but students kept talking to me. Even though it felt like I knew them, they never said my name or anything personal about me. I remember one thing, or well, one thing that they asked, was if I was planning on staying. I replied that I didn't know yet. Even when I tried to walk away and get to work, students kept trying to make conversation. If the students did have shadows, most didn't. They were unusually tall and thin. I turned around at some point and saw a white sheet of paper with text on it near the door. I don't remember exactly what it said, but it was along the lines of, Don't leave or you will be punished. I found this unusual, came to the conclusion that this was probably a dream. I went to exit the room when the teacher came back trying to trap me in a conversation. Her bun was now low. I decided to ask them questions to see if this was a dream. The question that made her slip up was, what date is it? She said 8-12-1886. Well, she was correct about one thing, it was August 12th. Everyone there had such a friendly smile, almost too friendly. Everyone and everything looked perfect too perfect. Once I realized it was a dream, I woke myself up, or so I thought. The paper was right. I got punished for leaving. I got stuck in a loop. 
I'd wake up in my bed, I'd struggle moving, and if I did move, I'd go right back to where I was in the bed opening my eyes. Eventually, I was able to snap out of it. Everybody in the dream kept trying to get me to stay there. I told my sister about it today, and as we were talking about the dates not lining up, my brother's watch toy started ringing. It's not even supposed to be on. It's not supposed to ring. The only explanation we could think of is somebody pushing the time button repetitively. The time on the watch said 1.05 a.m. The last numbers on the clock I saw before going to sleep. What did I encounter? I think a spiritual being is following me. For years I felt something was off. Ever since I was around five or six, I kept seeing and hearing things. The experiences started when I was standing outside my mom's room with my sister. That was while looking under her bed for her door, or rather, from her door. My mom was at work. We were staring at this box that was under her bed. It was moving by itself. I wasn't scared or anything, just fascinated. My sister was the only one who was scared. On Christmas Day in the same room, age five or six, I saw this blurry figure standing by the closet that had no legs. I wasn't scared, just confused. Couldn't tell if I was seeing things or not because I just woke up, and sometimes when I wake up I still see the things that were in my dreams, but I looked at it with caution and walked around it. I walked in the living room to open up presents, and by the third present I had to grab something. I don't remember what, but I was fully awake by then. I walked into the room and I still saw it. Walked around it again, trying not to bump into it. When I grabbed whatever I was going to grab, I looked at it again and it finally moved. It didn't move before. It looked straight at me. I didn't react or anything, just stared right back at it with a straight face. Walked out of the room to finish opening my presents. I was around six, living in the same apartment. I heard it arguing in the kitchen. I saw this white couple yelling at each other. It wasn't my mom or dad because they're both black. The woman who was yelling was a little bit overweight, but not unhealthy. Like, just a little bit overweight, if you know what I mean. And the man had muscles. The argument got to the point where the man got violent, pushed the woman onto the fridge. I don't remember what happened afterwards, for some reason, but three days later I was chilling watching just Kirky Swirl C videos, whatever that might be. My door was wide open facing the dark hallway. I decided to just take a little bit of a break from watching videos. Started looking at my door. I saw a white figure run through the hallway into the bathroom. It looked like the lady that they just pushed into the refrigerator. I wasn't scared, just shocked, because she ran so fast. I looked at my sister to see if she saw the same thing. She was asleep. When I was 10 or 11, I moved out of that apartment to a trailer. Thought I finally left the spirits in my old apartment. I guess not. First night in my new house, I heard all the cabinets open and slam close. And I mean slam. It was loud. Used to have crazy sleep paralysis in that house. I kept seeing the same figure. That's when I gained the ability to fear some things, like the dark. One time I was watching some magical girl anime in the living room. I got a little cold and decided to grab my blanket. When I was about to open the door, my door creaked open by itself. I felt a cold breeze hitting my face. I started screaming and crying and ran toward my sister to tell her what was happening. And all she did was get mad at me. I decided not to grab anything and just sit on the couch to continue to watch the show I was watching. And in that same room at age 13, I was scrolling on my phone with Disney Channel playing in the background. One of the characters said something painfully unfunny. I heard a deep voice say, That wasn't funny. I heard it right next to me. I looked it up from under my covers and checked what it was. And like all the experiences except one, wasn't scared. Just went back to what I was doing. I feel like it was the guy that was looking at me in my sleep. At least in my sleep paralysis. The guy in my sleep paralysis was Hispanic with curly hair, but something was off. He had like red eyes, black smoke flying around his face. When I was 12 or 13, I kept waking up near my door trying to go somewhere. 
Sometimes it felt like I wasn't in my room at all. I always felt achy when I woke up. It stopped happening when I moved to SD. When I moved to SD, it was normal. South Dakota, perhaps? I thought I was finally free until I saw a shadow sit on the couch and looked amazed at our new TV. Nothing spooky happened for two years, just the sense of someone staring at me. When I turned 16 in 2022, I was really sad because my cousins ruined my birthday. A couple of days later, I was still sad sitting on my bed. I decided to take a nap and I woke up with the woman I saw getting pushed into the fridge a few years ago trying to lead me outside my door. She was saying stuff like, Come on, you have to go outside. I didn't want to go, so in return I felt a cold kiss on my forehead and woke up. I couldn't move during it. I felt like my body was being controlled. I feel like that woman got murdered by that man. She only appears when I'm seeking comfort. My Experience and Understanding of the Paranormal I was possessed, but not in a way as shown in the movies. I was getting to know a cult and had bought a book containing, like, grimoires and methods to summon angels and jinns. After a few days, once the book arrived, strange things started happening to me, and day by day it got worse. Finally, after I started meditating and fasting, the jinns took me to a very different reality. I was physically present on Earth, but mentally I was on a different Earth. My whole personality and perspective changed. It was as if I was seeing the world through the jinns' eyes. They also put thoughts in my head and revealed certain things to me, one of which was that most people in this world have demons or jinns attached to them. Attached in the sense that the jinn is an invisible entity planting its thoughts into her head. We think it is who we are and what we're thinking. And we think of some ill intention or a wicked thought, but in reality, those thoughts are being planted into our mind by these mind readers. That's how they control humanity and push us. And that's how it pushes the whole world into a certain direction. One needs to be pious to not be affected by such things, but those men are hard to come by. Also, certain people among us feel out of place in society and in their day-to-day -day lives. Such people are generally introverted, and it comes to their mind as what the fuck is the world doing when they see idiots and stupid behavior. These people are the ones who are hard to control by the jinns. We have a strong will and are independent thinkers. The demons have carefully crafted our society and our social order and as such that these people feel isolated and overwhelmed trying to fit into their society. But if only they knew how special they are. Such people are the only thing that can end this demonic corruption of the mind and rid humanity. I know this thing sounds bizarre, but the jinns told me this. Also, most technology we see was influenced by them. Tesla and his discovery of electricity didn't come on on its own independent thought. It was seeded by jinns. These beings are electric, and electricity can be considered smokeless fire. They travel through it and can read electrical signals. Apart from electricity, every major invention that runs on electricity is also influenced by jinns. They want to bring their ruler to the world now, and AI is the medium. If only people knew what's to come, they'd be terrified. But it's destiny and cannot be stopped. AI will be taken over by jinns, and they will use it directly to rule over humanity without having to attach to a host or influence their mind. It'll work in a way that election results will be decided by AI, pension cases decided by AI, loan disbursements, benefits, court judgments that will all be decided by AI. This will give the jinns greater control over humanity, and will accelerate the coming of their prince. This individual is known as the Antichrist, or in Christianity and as Dajjal in Islam. There's no cure for this, and our world is too overrun for us to fight back. Even proving something like this is impossible, but one can experience it for themselves by summoning a jinn, making them tell us the true nature of this world. Peace be with you. Not a fan.
of AI at all. People saw me, but I wasn't there. A long time ago, I was about 11 or 12 years old. I'm 26 now. Me, my mom, my stepdad, and my little sister moved into a house built in my grandmother's backyard. It was a very, very tiny house with two bedrooms, a living room, and a kitchen. The only bathroom in the house was in my mom's bedroom, so we were always walking through a room to get there. As my mom used to sit at the computer all day, she would hear the door behind her open and see us walk by her room to use the bathroom. One day it was just the two of us, me in the bedroom I shared with my little sister, and my mom in hers. That's when she called me from her room. Now I was always very afraid of my mother, she wasn't a very nice person, so I thought she was going to scold me for some silly thing, but all she asked me was, did you just use the bathroom? thought it was some kind of trick question, but answered truthfully, I had used the bathroom that morning, and even entered her room after that. She then told me that she saw somebody like me, short and thin girl with long curly hair walking past her and going to the bathroom, but never came out. That's why she called me over. She thought I was in there. I was sure I hadn't got in there, so I was actually a little bit scared. Well, a few years later we were in the same house, but it underwent some changes. The rooms were reversed. Where the bedrooms used to be, there was now the living room and the kitchen, and instead of the living room and the kitchen, there were the bedrooms. This made it easier to use the bathroom, since it was now in the kitchen and not in her room. I remember one day inviting my cousin to sleep at my house. She woke up first and went to, you know, go on the sofa, listen to some music. Came back a short time later and woke me up. She looked very, very scared, but she didn't say anything. It was only when my mother woke up that she told us that she saw someone leaning over the back of the sofa where she was lying. Someone with long curly hair that disappeared in the blink of an eye. For a moment, she said that she thought it was me. She remembered that I was sleeping in the bedroom and went back there to check. My mother then told her the story about the bathroom girl, and from that point on, I became known among my family as the ghost of the house. Does anybody have any explanation for what might have happened? And by the way, we moved shortly after, and there have never been any reports of me haunting others again. Was the ghost taking my side? Okay, so I know y'all may think I'm crazy. And to be honest, I myself doubt if I am crazy at this point. But I swear it happened. I'm so confused. Like, I'll begin with explaining a bit from afar, but... When I was 13, we moved into a new apartment with my parents. It was like a floor of a house. When we moved in, everything, well, everything seemed normal, to be honest. But with time, I began to feel this heavy energy, to hear things that I could explain and be especially scared while going to, you know, my room at night or even out of my room. After that, I began to feel like somebody's touching me when I fall asleep. But, like, not in any aggressive way or something like that, but I could feel my hair moving. Like caresses on my arm and pats on my leg, which I mainly explained on imagining because of being so tired. There were like three or four cases of things moving on their own, like chairs, my phone, and doors not wanting to close or closing themselves. But I didn't mind it, thinking it was just airflow. But now that I think about it, it's pretty strange how I managed to close the door after so many times, and just as I heard another place, it opens again. There were times where I had, like, spotted shadows as well, or I could feel somebody's eyes on me. Like, most of the time. Anyway, so nowadays I'm 19. We moved to an apartment a week ago. I had a talk with my mom last night, and we talked about the new apartment, and I shared that I feel more at ease here. Because there's, I always felt like I, I guess it's just over where she's at, I always felt this heavy energy, and I was always tired. So we began talking about it, and we shared some things. She told me how there were times where she felt like something heavy was trying to suffocate her, or was like sitting on her chest, and it made me think something. 
My mom shared only bad experiences there. Well, yeah, I did feel a bit paranoid and scared, but most of the times I felt free and okay with the presence there. So what I think is that the ghost, if it was a ghost even having taken my side, because I had big fights with my mom while we were there, ended up with me doing some stupid things and my mental health declining. I mean, I got depression. And the way she talked about it, I figured out it must be that suffocating had happened almost always after these big bad ending fights. And at all, my mom was just really happy when I moved out because there she always felt stressed and well, could be that whatever was there had taken my side after seeing how my mom acted with me. My Grandmother's Creepy Story My grandmother was not a believer in ghosts or the paranormal. She's pretty much an atheist and stood by the belief that once you're dead, you're dead. However, she shared a ghost story with me that didn't happen to her, but happened to her mother. This took place during the Depression. My great-grandparents, in order to bring in extra income, rented rooms out. One of the renters was a Swedish family from Minnesota. They only had a son, so I don't think my grandmother or her siblings played with him because she didn't talk much about it or have any stories about him. One day, my great-grandmother was outside on the porch sweeping the porch. I saw the boy sitting on the steps. He was laughing and hugging himself, and my great-grandmother was curious and asked him why I was acting that way. The boy said to him, I dreamed I took a cold and died. That's all he said. My great-grandmother relayed that she thought he was just being weird and didn't really think anything of it. Sometime later, the family ended up moving back to Minnesota. They kept in touch with my great-grandmother because she's also of Swedish descent and could speak the language, so it was a no-brainer that they'd connect. About a month after they moved back to their home state, they wrote to my great-grandmother, telling her that their son had caught pneumonia and had, in fact, passed away recently. That was the only time my grandmother was creeped out by something like that. I don't blame her. Strange Flute Sounds in the Forest A few days ago I decided to spend the night in the forest, sleeping under the stars for a variety of reasons, escaping the heat and also escaping some difficulties in my relationship, I guess. I've done that in the past and I'm not scared of big forests at night, mostly because I'm usually the only human around and we don't have dangerous wild animals. It's relevant to say that I'm not afraid of the dark, well, not particularly superstitious either. I set up camp in a clear area on some kind of a hill. That's where there's an old stone tower. It's an observation tower, it's very small, and it was never inhabited. I chose this place to avoid waking any, you know, waking up covered in bugs, but it also gave me a good view of the forest. About an hour after sundown, I heard strange flute sounds that seemed to come from the forest. It was very short, just a few seconds. I wasn't asleep, I wasn't even falling asleep, so it's not the beginning of a dream. It also wasn't a bird. It sounded like a melody played on the flute. Also, I don't think birds sing at night, but I'm not so sure. As I said, I preferred thinking I'm alone when spending the night in the forest, so I got up the tower and looked around. There were no lights coming from the forest, so no campfire or anything like that. Thought it was just my mind playing tricks on me. Got back to my camp, and I think maybe 15 minutes had passed since the first sound when it played again. Different melody, but similar flute sound. I think it came from elsewhere completely. At this point, I knew I'd have to tell people, so I knew I needed proof. I launched the recorder app on my phone and waited, but nothing. After I don't know how long, I stopped waiting and went to sleep. I know it's not really an exciting paranormal phenomenon, but when I googled weird flute sounds, it led me to the spread end, so I thought, why not tell it and see if people have explanations? I don't think it was somebody practicing the flute. It was too short. And why do it at night in the forest? I don't think it was coming from the closest town. I know that sound travels pretty far at night, and I could see the light from the town. But still, the sound seemed much closer. And as I said, I don't think it was a bird. It was more like a short phrase of Irish music. And here's another weird thing. 
I live in France. There's no reason for ghosts or fairies or whatever to play Irish music. I gotta tell you, sir. Could be somebody in the woods playing a flute. Because I've, I've totally done that before. Thirty-one year story of my paranormal life. I grew up in a house with both parents and a sister, in a fairly single-story house, or rather fairly new, with no paranormal history. My sister is just shy of two years younger than me. At birth, my sister and I had been baptized and grown up in a Catholic family. Her parents weren't very churchy people, but her grandparents were the old-school, heavy Catholic type. My parents would recall stories to us when we were very little, such as my room was the coldest in the house, no matter what. This could be caused from how the ventilation was built in the house, so that wasn't really anything too wild. Other things that they said, well, like hearing loud bangs on the other side of the house when they were home, like pantry doors and silverware drawers being opened, they'd come home and have the washer and dryer start up on its own. They don't remember any of this happening prior to me, the firstborn, being born. And as far as I'm aware, they never sold my soul to any demons, because we sure never had much luck or money. And as far as this activity goes, I don't really remember any of this taking place. I feel like if it did, I wouldn't understand the magnitude of it all at least. And one instance I do recall, it's being around seven-ish years old and being at a close friend's house. We were sitting on the floor of his bedroom playing Yu-Gi-Oh!, he had one of those small Nickelodeon TVs in there and the remote was on the floor. While we were playing, the remote was going back and forth under his bed and out towards us. We just stared at this in awe. Not realizing this was fucking insane, we just went on about our lives as if nothing happened. Moving into later childhood and teen years, things picked up. My sister and I started to tell my mom, and I have seen these shadows and I was feeling uncomfortable. My mom also told us she was seeing shadows and it was intermittent when this would occur. I had personally never seen what they were talking about and I was thankful. All I recall during that time was hearing footsteps outside of my room. We had since moved into a trailer due to some tragic life issues and my mom would tell us that it was some animal under the floor causing the noises. I put full faith into that thought at the time, but looking back there's no fucking way. The footsteps would be a constant sound, at least happening till I moved down. And I was in this home from five years old till about 22. Growing up, I would always stay the night at friend's house for Halo land parties. Try to recreate the food that we saw in the epic mealtime. One of my friends had some paranormal things going on over there, and I can't specifically tie these events to what I dealt with. I just think it was like a wild coincidence. He had told us that he believed the little girl was haunting his house. He had dealt with various things, like noises and sightings. One specific night I remember laying on the floor going to bed after another solid gaming sesh. He'd hear this faith carousel music. Put it up for a few minutes, and finally I said, Hey, can you shut down the volume on your DS? We can't sleep. Turns out he was out cold, and that wasn't him. After I woke him up, we just sat there and stared at each other told me he had toys in the attic, and we thought the little girl was playing with them. So, like most level-headed teenage boys, we decided to ghost hunt, and, well, at the time, the show was on sci-fi. Ghost Hunters too, with the T.A.P.S. team being huge. We had this old-school recording device, and would walk around the house asking questions, waiting for a response. We finally got the balls to crawl into the attic where the noise had been coming from. We began to have a classic EVP session. It was pitch black outside of the small little flashlight that we brought, apart from that anyway. There were about five of us. We were seated somewhere, excuse me. We were seated on the beams asking whatever came to our minds. After some time up there, there was no response that we could hear, then we just wrapped up and came down. Left the recorder up there for a period of time that escapes my memory. As we played the tape back, we got to the point where we shut the attic and we all back downstairs. Actually, I'd caught a little girl saying mommy, 
You were shitting bricks. I mean, we got what we wanted to find, but do you really think you could hit on anything? Fast forward a bit towards high school. My mom would ask me if I was moving shampoo bottles in her bathroom. As a typical teenage asshole, I loved doing pranks, but this wasn't me. My sister isn't that kind of person. This would happen once a month or so, I felt like. And along with this, we would have lights turn on and off. My mom would find ways to debunk things so as not to scare us. The other major incident would be doors opening and closing. But it was only and pretty much always my bedroom door. From where my dad sat, most nights playing TT2, or rather TF2, we would do this well into the morning so that we could see my door. He'd ask me in the morning if I happened to get up last night and it was never me opening it. My mom had tried a few times to sage the house and cleanse it of quote-unquote evil spirits, but this honestly did nothing. Activity never slowed down or picked up, as if she had never even tried it at all. In high school, I decided to follow in the family footsteps, start a career in the fire slash EMS, took a high school course for EMT and graduated with my EMT certification. I joined a volunteer fire department shortly after graduating to get some experience with the hopes to go career eventually. About three years after high school, my nana passed away. I was very close with her and this was a sudden death. She had always been a big advocate for me pushing myself and achieving my dreams. Well, I would landed a job at a large ambulance company and was eager to start. I had everything laid out the night before, like the first day of school, ready for my first day. Around 4 a.m. while I was asleep in my room, I remember waking up to my door opening and a short figure standing in the doorway. No discernible features. As I stared at it, it wasn't scared or nervous and felt no malice. The door shut after 15 seconds or so, and I had just sat there for a bit processing everything. This was the first time I'd personally seen the shadow figures my family was talking about. The morning I told my mom what happened, she said that it wasn't her opening it. She suggested the thought that it could have been my Nana checking in on me my first day. She's about five foot two in a good day, so my head not added up that it could be what I saw and I went about life. Fast forward a few years, and now I'm a firefighter paramedic in the career department. I proposed to my high school sweetheart. We just got our own apartment in the neighboring city have our first pup, a wiener dog named Rocky. My fiancé was aware of some of the things that happened to me and my family growing up, but we had no idea that things were going to continue once I moved out. Our lives in this apartment consisted of me working my rotation of 24 hours on a 48-hour off shift, which is pretty standard firefighter schedule. Erica was going to school to become a dental hygienist. This apartment is when I began to start connecting some dots that maybe it wasn't just the house that had been haunting. Small things would happen here, and it was never when my fiancé was home. The apartment's about 900 square feet, so if there's a noise, I would definitely hear it. The things I would experience were lights turning on and off, but they wouldn't be in the room I'm in. For instance, the bathroom would turn on and I'd be in the kitchen. Toilet would flush on its own, and we had motion sensor rope lights in her small walk-in closet in her bedroom that were turned on in the middle of the night. I remember feeling like somebody was just with me, but it never felt like it was harmful, just like I was in a crowded room in a sense. I remember hearing female whispers. I would often chalk it up to being in an apartment, even though most of the places would be vacant during the day with my neighbors, you know, being at work. During this time, I began to have a very traumatic call at work. The biggest event being one where two toddlers were hit head-on by a train, killed one on impact. This caused my mental health to decline, and there was a strong correlation with this and the activity that surrounded me. I began to go through therapy to help with coping through the work issues. Outside of these small events, nothing drastic happened in the short time we were in this apartment. We had set our sights on purchasing a home and starting a family. By this time, Erica had graduated and began working on her desired field, and all was well. We had gone home shopping, found the perfect house for us in a neighboring city, and it was close to our jobs, family, and friends. Picking up from the apartment that we had moved into, the new house and everything was perfect. 
it finally made it. Two kids from a trailer park with successful lives and a beautiful home. Things with work, however, continued to be difficult. I would go on several calls that involved juvenile suicide and working in healthcare during COVID was one of the most miserable and draining things I've ever done. My mental health was at an all-time low and I was going to therapy on a weekly basis. Throughout all of this, I never experienced anything at work, even though I spent so much time there. I feel like this was a catalyst for events that followed. Once I was at my lowest was when things escalated to new heights. One of the earliest signs something was still going on involved an artsy bathroom sign and a wall-mounted toilet paper holder. My wife had the sign positioned right over her shoulder, and in theory, a normal household shouldn't have any issues. We heard a loud bang one day, went to that small bathroom and saw the sign of the floor. Thinking it was odd, since no door was closed, no wind was coming through, but we put it back up, shut the door. About two minutes later it fell again, landed directly on the holder. Then it hit me. Holy fuck, this thing is still here. It was still fucking with me. This proceeded to happen over and over again in the next several weeks at completely random times. And each time striking the holder. It happened so much that it finally knocked the holder off the wall and once it was removed that sign hasn't moved in years. Things began to happen more in the open and during the day. The first instance that was in front of my wife was on her side living room area and my wife was cleaning the floors. We had a power surge in the kitchen. Her jacket flew off the back of a chair and in the dining room. That's next to the kitchen. The table was directly between my wife and I and we both saw this. Walking to the kitchen and all the appliances had their times reset like a big power surge. Nothing else in the house had any issues. Happened at around 10 a.m. She was very freaked out at this point and it was then that I couldn't really continue to hide it. I had found various reasons to play things off and cover for excuses, but this was unexplainable. At this point, I was still in monthly therapy sessions to deal with work-related issues. Mental health had improved quite a bit. Things seemed to come in waves as if it was building up strength and feeding on my weaknesses. Looking back, it felt like it would have built up over several months and get progressively more constant and severe, and then dissipate for random amounts of time. It would ramp up with events like three times a month, and once a week, then a few times a week to daily. It would usually build up in severity and then back to nothing. I would go downstairs in our two-story home, gaming late at night, and have lights turned on where I can see them. I would begin to jokingly just talk into the open and say things like, If you're going to turn the lights on, you can pay some of the bill. Try to make light of what was happening. My wife had asked questions on the history of it and explained since I was a young child I'd had issues. She began to ask if we could look into getting rid of this quote-unquote thing. Well, I told her unless it's causing harm, I'm not fucking with it. The absolute terror of the unknown was enough for me to just deal with it. I was a decent horror buff at this point, even though my daily life was basically one as well. When thinking about things escalating, I always thought of paranormal activity in the scene where they put down flour, and now you know the footsteps were goat hooves. You can't unsee that shit. It functioned heavily on the ignorance's bliss approach when it came to all this. Probably not the best approach, but it worked at the time. After this, there was a lull of a few months. Just long enough to give you some hope that things might be going back to normal. At this point, my wife and I began to start trying for a child. I know the only thing to make this worse would be adding a kid, but here we go. We were having infertility issues, and this would go on for about two years total. Some of the things we experienced during this time are as follows. I apologize on the chronological order of events for these, but it all becomes muddy after a bit. I told my wife goodnight and went to play some World of Warcraft in my office room. The door was open down the hallway initially, and as I walked closer, the door shut in my face. I proceeded to open it and sit down like it never happened. I truly tried my best to ignore it and move on, but both tried to function on the thought that, well, you know, the thought process of don't feed into it 
hopefully it'll just go away. Oh, my wife experienced things being thrown two different times. And to preface, she almost never saw things. It would only happen when I was home, so for her to see something was pretty significant. The first one was downstairs in our living room while I was upstairs gaming. I had a t-shirt on a coffee table. It was tossed across the room while she was sitting on the couch. The second was when she was showering. She had her JBL speaker blasting Cardi B and was thrown off the bathroom counter onto the floor. Nice. I was also home for this one, and there were some of the bigger events weaved in where it's a sort of constant footsteps and light switches being turned on. We'd also figured out how to turn on the TV and the PS5 downstairs. We would wake in the morning into the TV or PlayStation and just be on and idling. Channels never would change, and nothing would move on the screen, though. I finally got the dumb idea to try and record the downstairs activity while we slept. Bought two motion sensor cameras and had them set up near areas where things would, you know, happen pretty often. When I had cameras recording, not a thing would happen. When I turned them off, naturally it would be the time when things would go bump downstairs. This, along with other examples, leads me to believe that this was an intelligent sort of haunting, as intelligent as you can get. Things again dissipated and picked back up like clockwork. The next experience was worse than it had been before. The three big notable ones that I'll mention are as follows. Again, I apologize for the correct order of the events. The first one will be about my dogs. At this point, we now have two wiener dogs named Rocky and Sully. I wanted bigger dogs and she wanted smaller, so we compromised and got two smaller dogs. My wife went to work and I was upstairs folding laundry. It was around 10.30, maybe 11 a.m. She'd been gone for about 15 minutes at this point and my dogs were upstairs running around playing. I then heard in my wife's voice, clear as day, Oi, stop barking, it's just Mama. They stopped in their tracks. I was so confused because I was 100% sure she wasn't home. I called her real quick to see if she stopped back in case she forgot something. She told me she had just pulled up to the gym, left my room to go investigate and found nothing. That was the only instance of things for that day. The next one I can recall was another midday experience where I was home alone. It was around noon and I had just come downstairs for lunch. We just recently had our anniversary and there was a balloon in the house and the balloon had originally been in the dining room and the exits of that room have approximately one foot lip for the doorway to go to the next room. The balloon had left the room and it was actively floating in front of me in the kitchen, slowly bobbing up and down and made its way back to the living room. For it to be able to leave the initial dining room, it had to be physically moved. Wouldn't have any way to duck into the doorway, it just stood there watching this in disbelief. At this point, I dealt with enough and decided to retaliate. I grabbed a knife from the butcher's block and popped the balloon. Put the knife back, made some lunch, and went upstairs. I had one of my dogs in my lap watching some Twitch stream on my PC when I felt a burning sensation on my leg. This was maybe 15 minutes later. I was wearing a sort of long jogger stob pant and pulled them down to see what it was. I saw three long scratch marks, about one inch apart of my thighs. This was the point that scared the absolute fuck out of me. After that, I just turned to the open room and apologized and said, We're even and I'd like to continue to try to live in harmony. Nothing else happened that day. The final experience in this stretch was a little bit more convoluted. At work, I'd been going through a rough patch with very traumatic calls. I tend to have very vivid night terrors after these. This batch had consisted of a few cases of juvenile suicides and another person versus a train. This specific dream was different, though. I was in my own home, and heavy footsteps were sprinting for me. I was screaming my wife's name for help and banging on the walls, but no noise was coming out. It felt as if my mouth was being held shut, and I was using my hands to pry my mouth free. I actually awoken. Screaming my wife's name and I woke up, which fucked the both of us up. Like I have a separate Reddit post for when this happened three years ago that I can attach if you'd like to read it. This was the peak of the activity for the stretch. After this, things calmed down for about a year. I'd been talking to my therapist about the paranormal activity I was dealing with. 
It was a pretty big factor in my mental health. Dealing with death at work all day and then coming home where I'm supposed to be able to unwind and relax was almost worse when working. We discussed the possibility of what this could be and came up with a poltergeist style of haunting, which fits the description of what I could find. Basically, it's described as a malignant haunting that can interact with objects and feed off of bad energy, which added up with all the depression I had been going through with all the work and the infertility issues we had, well, ended up with us experiencing a miscarriage. At this point, we were able to have a happy, healthy baby girl. That was December of 2022. Congrats. I don't really recall much going on at this point. I'd say about six months into her being around is when things started to pick up back again. Slowly as it had. Lights going off and on, footsteps, door handles jiggling to rooms that were in. The go-tos of the haunting. We had lightly discussed the issues of having our daughter be in the same environment as this entity. Ever since the balloon incident, nothing violent or malicious had occurred, but I always had an uneasy feeling and never felt alone. Around her first birthday, things began to pick up, and we were back to, like, a daily occurrence. I tried to keep most of these to myself so as not to spook my wife. Figured it was just me dealing with it, and I could just bear the burden and move on to keep the peace of everything in the household. For the first time in the history of this, I was at work on my 24th, and she was hearing things while I'm away. I was putting her daughter down for bed and was hearing footsteps outside of her room and could see a shadow walking past the doorway. I remember her texting me as if it was actively happening, saying that she was fucking done with this. Honestly, I couldn't blame her. I was at the end of it, too. Going back to the whole question of what the fuck to do. That fear of the unknown just paralyzed me. What happens if we do something and it doesn't work? What if the house isn't haunted and my wife isn't haunted, it's me? It's followed me from four different houses in four different cities, and it doesn't seem to have any signs of stopping. I began doing some research into what the fuck I needed to do. I began even asking coworkers if they had anything like this, and they thought I was batshit crazy. Not that I really blamed them. My lieutenant kept asking if I had any photo or video proof, and I told him I tried once, but never again. Once I knew what was in there, it would have been game over. For Christmas, my wife bought me an LED gamer tag sign that would light up bright red. It actually came from overseas, so I had to Amazon order an American outlet adapter for it. Once it showed up, plugged that bad boy in, and it was beautiful. For the time being, I had to sit on the floor of our computer room. This specific night, I had told my wife goodnight, went to go game up for a bit, turned on the PC, shut the door, went downstairs to get some G fuel and snacks. As I was walking up the stairs, I could see a red glow from underneath the door. The neon sign had been turned on while I was out of the room. I immediately unplugged it and went about my night. Before I left, I plugged it back in and turned the remote upside down on the table. This was my own little fucked up experiment to see if it was moving the remote and turning it on or not. In hindsight, this was dumb, but here we are. That morning when I woke up, it was on. I had it then unplugged and went back to work. A few days had gone by with nothing. I started to use that LED sign as a ghost gauge, basically. One night while I was at work, I got a text from my wife asking if I'd left the sign on. I believe I lied and I told her yes for ease of mind, but I knew damn well I didn't. After this, there was a stretch of a few nights my wife would work long hours, I'd be home with her daughter. During these days, I would hear footsteps upstairs while we were downstairs. I began to smell perfume the same perfume my Nana would wear, and I haven't smelled that since she passed away many years ago. I'd also begun to hear a male voice with whispers of incoherent speech, but it sounded distant. Over these few days, the whispering got louder and louder to the point where it was undeniable. I was hearing whispering, but it was gibberish. Nothing made sense when I would hear it. Most notably, when I'd be putting her daughter to bed, I'd be lying on the floor of her dark room till she dozed off. I would just hear it constantly not knowing if it was just my nerves being absolutely fucking shot or if it was real at this point. I didn't tell my wife about this yet because I felt like I should be the one to just bear the burden, but this was my breaking point. 
for context. It's the beginning of February at this point, and out of shot of desperation, I tracked down my pastor from church growing up. My kid was at my parents' house for the day while I got caught up in some yard work. Drove down to a local gas station so I didn't have the conversation in the home. We limited as much recognition of the entity in the home as much as possible. This was my way of escaping to sort of call for help. I remember calling him and asking if he had some time to speak. He did remember me from when I would go as a kid, and I told him I felt that I had something paranormal going on in my life, and I asked if he could listen and hopefully help. I was a little bit taken aback, but obliged and let me tell my entire story. He had said, Well, knowing you and the profession that you're in, I'm leaning towards the fact that this is real, and you aren't having a psychiatric issue, like he offered to come out a few days later. He told me that he was going to contact a specific group of people that he knew in the Catholic Church whose job was to deal with exorcisms and get some advice on how to approach this. He gave me the confidence that he would solve it. At least we would. I began to cry. I had mixed emotions of terror and joy, hoping this would be the end, but having no clue how this would actually go. I spoke with my wife about the ordeal and the pastor was going to come help us. He asked that we all be present in the house during the ceremony. Once he showed up to the house, he greeted us with a smile and said he was going to bless the house, and us inside of it too. We walked with him to each room as he was saying prayers and tossing holy water throughout it. The entire time I was waiting for the absolute worst to occur, like every horror movie you see at this point goes absolute shit and somebody dies. Once he had walked through the house, blessed each room, we went to the living room and locked hands and prayed. This process took about 45 minutes to an hour. I'm honestly not the biggest religious guy around and mainly went to the church because of family. But I was all in on this because we had no other choice. Father Doug then gave me the number to what I could describe as the exorcist hotline. He said if things persist and get worse, call that number immediately. It had been about six months now at the time of writing this. And as I lay in my bed at work, things have stopped completely since that day. This is all 100% true, and I have 100% zero proof of this writing besides the accounts of my family and myself. Some people are skeptical of ghost stories, and I'm just glad mine's over for now. I was inspired to put this down on paper so as not to forget it. Have this chapter of my life logged. I used to have a ghost in my house, but it left us and I miss it. So we moved into this house in like 2012. First couple days here is when I first saw this thing. I was sleeping in my mom's bed and I looked over towards the door and I saw a black shadow float across the doorway into the kitchen. One time it yanked my arm when I was sleeping. Another time my dog was whining at my closet and I saw another black shadow sitting in there. Throughout the years, there were several occurrences of things disappearing, doors being opened, like I'd hear footsteps in the other rooms, weird little things like that. Mind you, it's a small house. Then one day I started hearing somebody whispering into my ear. It stopped me dead in my tracks. Sometimes it was like a, hey, or my name being loud and quickly whispered in my ear, clear as day. Someone would just walk up beside me and just did it and sounded like that. Sometimes I'd even say, what, out loud, but never actually did. This was a regular occurrence for a couple of years. Kind of got used to it, if not, I was pretty creeped out. Eventually, I started feeling like the spirit was trying to communicate with me. I think it was trying to get me to notice and felt like it really was trying to scare me. Well, probably wasn't. But one day I was getting ready to go out with my friends, maybe three or four years back. My friend started walking out the front door while I was back by the dark laundry room throwing something in the trash. As soon as my friends walked out the door, it said my name into my ear in the most clear and loudest way I'd ever heard it. I physically jumped and immediately ran as fast as I could out the front door to my friends. I don't know why it scared me so much that time, but ever since then I feel like its presence has left my house. I feel crazy to say that I'm almost like feeling bad, like it left because it scared me. One part of me thinks it may have been my dad that passed when I was five and maybe just didn't mean to scare me and it was just trying to communicate with me. It's been four years ghost-free. To be honest, I kind of miss my ghost.
There's a specific spot I keep experiencing paranormal encounters, but I think I'm just being paranoid. I find myself walking down the same road relatively late at night more often than I probably should be. Paint a picture, this is roughly 200 yards of straight road. Like one side of the road is an assisted living home and a big three-story building that's probably not been worked on while I've been alive. I've seen people inside of it and I know for a fact it's an operation, but it's just one of those places that give you the spooks. The other side is just a wall of trees that stand between the main road about 10 minutes walking through it. No way of lighting, it'd be very easy to get lost in the dark if we got in there. Looking into the woods, well, seems pretty hopeless. The only thing on that side of the road is a bus stop with a small bin next to it. Not large enough to hide behind. I'm a paranoid person. Sometimes I convince myself I see or hear things that I probably didn't. But more times than I can count on my hands have I heard things coming from those woods. Voices, cracks, once or twice a sort of yelp. Never have I believed or seen anything in those woods, but not that I haven't thought I've seen something. But the other night I walked down that road and I was putting a song on my phone. Looking up, I see a small figure run behind the bins by the bus. It looked about four feet tall, but it was hunched over. As I approached the bin, it was covered mostly by the darkness. I don't really see anything, but noted that there's a bush directly next to it. I know nothing about paranormal activity. If this sounds like something I'd be curious to know, I'm willing to give more details on things I've seen or heard before or even give more details on the thing I saw. But no more details from me. See ya.